You sure you killed him? I can't do a hard time. Man, let me tell you something. I'm not even going to do a full trailer breakdown because they finally released the 30 second sister trailer today or this afternoon. I just saw it. Somebody sent it to me. And yeah, my trailer breakdown, which has over 40,000 hits so far. Thank you for that. Um, there really isn't much to add on to it. I mean, we get a couple more lines of dialogue between Danny and Andy. And then, of course, you know, when they go to talk with Sabrina in jail. So that's about it. I'll probably do two separate videos and I'll post a trailer by itself like as a youtube short no big deal there but and, and again this isn't to say i don't know danny people are going to come after me anyway. i don't give a shit i'll just sum it up like this don't do the crime if you can't do the time i can't do hard time andy well you shouldn't have gotten in your car and hit jonah's car so hard danny that's all i'm saying like i said I'm not rooting for Jonah. I've never rooted for Jonah. I've always talked about how Danny or or how Mignon or whoever uh, else supports Danny online. It shouldn't just be about Jonah shouldn't have done this. No man has the right to put their hands on a woman. It's the fact that the lesson that or some of the other core lessons to be taken out of the Danny storyline is watch, you know, who you hang out with or Better yet, if it's your first date with someone you barely know, watch out for, you know, red flags and, you know, never rush to bring someone to your home. You know, want to make that first date somewhere public and, you know, um, just read the room. But instead, it's all about how domestic violence, never put your hands on a woman, as opposed to, yeah, let's look at how we can avoid going from point A when you're at a restaurant with somebody to like point D. Uh, let me just say point E, um, point E when things get, you know, shaky at your own home. But yeah, that's the thing. You know, Danny's up here talking about I can't do hard time. But what does she expect to happen? You know, like even if um she pleads in court, you know, and explains her side of the story, just like Andy said, when you went after him outside, got in your car to run him over, that's where things get complicated. Like I've said time and time again. We don't know if there are cameras outside, you know, like uh, I believe it was in the parking lot. Yeah, it was the parking lot of the apartment complex where the, um, you know, the wreck happened. And, you know, the street lights or the lamp posts that are in the parking lot. We don't know if there are cameras there. Uh, we don't know how far this parking lot is from the street. So there could be like, you know, um, again, more cameras, traffic lights or hell might be cameras outside of the apartment complex. We don't know. There could be people who are, were watching from their building. They heard some commotion going on outside. They peeked out of the window to see what the hell was going on. And if a person or a camera from the outside of the apartment retold or recounted the tale of what happened that night, Danny was the full on aggressor. Again, I'm not dismissing what happened in her apartment. That was Jonah. But I'm talking about outside where there were actual cameras and ways of proving or excuse me, um, showing the court, the judge, the jury, what happened. Danny was the aggressor. She was the one running up behind Jonah. She was the one kind of like, you know, pounding him on his back before he turned around and shoved her to the ground. That's when she got that. It looked like a damn wiffle ball bat when I went back to look at the scene in slow motion and I finally was able to kind of make out what it was. It, it was kind of like shaped like a, I don't know, a kid's bat or something. But basically she started wailing on him hard enough to the point where he's on the ground before he made it to his car. Then she bust the windows out. And then, of course, we saw her get in her car and boom, ramming his. So I don't know how the hell she's going to get out of this one. So, yeah, I mean, Danny... You got to think of something. You know what's funny, though? Because I told my mom, you know, when people were starting getting mad at me on Twitter. And just to say, it, it wasn't getting to me. I was just telling her, you know what, sisters is a crazy thing because here's what happened in the show. And then there were a lot of people mad at me because I said, you know, this, that, and the third. And she's like, well, I'll tell you this much. Think about it this way. How much did Veronica Harrington get away with on the haves and the have-nots without going to jail? And I'm like, touche. <laughs> so I don't know. Danny might get a loophole. But I feel like the thing about sisters what makes it so much of a hit with the fans is the fact that it's more relatable in a sense. But yeah, I mean, but there are a ton of things in the show that don't make sense. I mean, even since season one, 
when you have these girls, aside from Karen, who owns her salon, so it makes sense, but Andy at the law firm, Sabrina being a bank manager, um, Danny working at the airport, how many times have these girls just clocked into work and then randomly left? I'd say Danny doesn't do it as much. If nothing else, she just, you know, gets high on the job. So that's pretty much it. But in terms of Andy and Sabrina, they will like drop. Sabrina could have like, and I'm talking like season one, there could be like 15 people at the bank and it's just her and Maurice and maybe one random teller at the window. And Sabrina will just drop everything and go. Or Andy, you know, I don't really know how the inner workings of a law firm, you know, go down day to day. I guess it's like, you know, you try to bring in clients, you have cases, perhaps sometimes you have to meet with clients, you know, outside of the law firm. Hey, would you like to meet for coffee somewhere or something? So I guess Andy is semi-excusable. But like in last week's episode, she literally just got to the office and then after talking with Fatima, Robin, she just bounces. So I don't know, it's kind of weird. But then again, like I said, yeah, I, I can see it like her going to, you know, this, that, and the third, you know, to meet with Karen. And then, of course, go to the jail at 5 o'clock after hours, probably. Um, if her law firm makes sense to meet with clients. But, um, yeah, what do you think? Do you think Danny is going to get out of this mess? I don't really know how. It's going to be weird. But I, I feel like we're getting to the point where, just like in the haves and the have-nots, we're going to have a, um, you know, rotating cast of characters in jail or in the hospital. And... I'm just happy Zach isn't the one locked up for a change because that that just got old. Like, how many times is dude going to get arrested? So, yeah, I hate to see Sabrina in this situation, but uh, at least it ain't Zach. So, make sure you like and subscribe. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description below, and I will catch you in the next one.